I thought it was perfect that Luca fell onto the ground there in an unacceptable position to put himself in with four minutes left with five fouls, and then immediately looks at the bench and says, you better bleeping challenge it, as if it's the bench's fault that he just made a terrible play. I'm standing here in the Mavericks tunnel. Over there is the Celtics tunnel. That's where the winners are. If Luca's ever going to be a winner coming out of this tunnel here, he is going to have to use this. Have what's happened in this finals as a learning experience. His defensive performance is unacceptable. He is a whole on the court. The Celtics are attacking him. They are ahead in this series because they have attacked him defensively. And you've got a situation here where Luca is complaining about the officiating. They have begged him. They have talked with him. They have pleaded with him. He is costing his team because of how he treats the officials. He's a brilliant player. He does so many things well. They are here because of how he did. His performance in this game is unacceptable and the reason why the Mavericks are not going to win. He's got to get over this. And the fact that he came out after the game and blamed the officials showed me he's nowhere close yet. So maybe Maybe over the summer, somebody will get to him because nobody with the Mavericks or anybody else in his life has. And that's where the Mavericks are at this point. They're never going to get to this tunnel with the trophy if he doesn't improve those aspects of his game. Brian Windhorse, a.k.a. Wendy. Well, I guess Wendy went unwinded on Luka Doncic after what happened in Game 3 because he was quite angered with what Luka Doncic had to say about NBA officials after the game. Hugh. Strong takes given out there by Brian Windhorse. This is Sports Guy talking that you guys are watching and listening to. I am Dustin Tran, your host, as I am here today to talk about Brian Windhorse blasting Luka Doncic for being rude to NBA officials. Not only did Brian Windhorse say that, he also focused on the mentality of Luka Doncic as he essentially called him a loser with his current mindset. With the Mavericks being down 3-0 in the series, it seems like the Mavericks are on the verge of getting swept in the NBA Finals. Before I say anything else though, I want to present you guys with a topic question. So, here it is. Do you agree with Brian Windhorst on what he said about Luka Doncic? For this question, I am going to play middleman. I'm going to agree with some of what Brian Windhorst had to say, and I'm going to disagree with what Brian Windhorst had to say because I thought Brian Windhorst did bring up solid points when talking about Luka Doncic. I do agree that Luka Doncic complains way too much to officials. I agree that Luka Doncic lets the game get to him a little too easily from the emotional side of it. I think Luka Doncic focuses too much on complaining to officials instead of playing defense but i also think that brian windhorse was entirely unprofessional in his approach of talking about luka Doncic. i mean to say that luka Doncic is a loser is absolutely crazy if luka Doncic was a loser with a loser's mindset then how did he drag this mavericks team to the nba finals this mavericks team is not some super team out there where they had a bunch of all-stars on their roster and all luka Doncic had to do was just show up to work because that's not what happened with luka Doncic and the dallas mavericks you look at how Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving have essentially carried the Dallas Mavericks into the NBA Finals this year. Let me tell you some of the players that exist on their roster. Daniel Gaffer is their starting center. P.J. Washington is their starting power forward. Derrick Jones Jr. is their starting small forward. And then, of course, you've got Kyrie Irving as Luka Doncic's sidekick. My point that I'm trying to say is Luka Doncic doesn't really have a great supporting cast outside of Kyrie Irving in the starting lineup but wait his bench gets even worse unless the name is Derek Lively the second his bench is absolutely trash whatsoever you look at how it's filled with that hardy guy he's a guard for the Dallas Mavericks he essentially doesn't really do anything for the Mavericks then you got that Exum guy he hasn't really done anything in this NBA career at all and then you've got that guy named Josh Green who I'm sure most casual NBA fans have probably never heard of he's an absolute bum off the bench for the Dallas Mavericks and then you got Tim Hardaway Jr who all he does is brick three-point shots all game long he doesn't really do anything outside of shoot threes and if the shot isn't falling well he's not going to be an effective player whatsoever and then you got Maxi Kleber who's an absolute scrub for the Dallas Mavericks what I'm trying to say is the Dallas Mavericks have zero depth whatsoever outside of Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving, and a couple of decent role players if Daniel Gaffer and PJ Washington are your third and fourth best players 
on a finals roster, you're not going to go very far in the finals. It's that simple. I feel bad that I said the Dallas Mavericks would take the Celtics to six games because I thought Luka Doncic would be able to carry the Mavericks to six games, but not even he could carry this Mavericks team to six games because you know why? The supporting cast is trash. And on top of that, his head coach, Jason Kidd, isn't even a good head coach whatsoever. I know some people are going to get offended by my statement, but I think Jason Kidd is vastly overrated as a head coach in the National Basketball Association. Am I saying that Jason Kidd is a trash head coach? No, I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying about Jason Kidd is that outside of the Mavericks era as the head coach, he has been proven to be a mediocre head coach. There's a reason why he was never able to get very far with the Milwaukee Bucks when he was their head coach and why his one year with the Brooklyn Nets was an absolute disaster when he was the head coach over there. There's a reason why Jason Kidd was not known to be a good NBA head coach prior to being on the Dallas Mavericks. I know some people are going to say, oh, look at how Jason Kidd improved the offense on the Dallas Mavericks or whatever, or how the defense plays great when Jason Kidd is the head coach. But let's be honest, the offensive system improved in Dallas because of Luka Doncic. It didn't improve because of Jason Kidd. Luka Doncic has one of the smartest IQs in the history of the NBA. And we all know that Luka Doncic can have amazing basketball IQ. I believe the offense is strictly off of what Luka Doncic believes in. If Luka Doncic says we have to play a certain type of offense, they're going to follow whatever Luka Doncic says. And Luka Doncic will be the first person to tell you that. And then, of course, you've also got Kyrie Irving, who's a heck of a Robin to Luka's Batman. He has been an incredible second option for the Dallas Mavericks this year. I know he hasn't been great in the NBA Finals, but he did show up in Game 3. So Kyrie Irving did do his part in that regard. But against the Celtics team, they're going to need more than two guys to show up against a deep Celtics roster. I mean, you're talking about a team that has Jay Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Derek White, Drew Holiday, Chris Tyus Porzingis when healthy, Al Horford, Sam Hauser, and Peyton Pritchard. I mean, it's a really deep roster, and the Boston Celtics have a very good supporting cast around their star players. If Jason Tatum has a bad night, that's okay because somebody like Drew Holiday can step up for him. If somebody like Jalen Brown is going off, well, Jason Tatum can just go ahead and manage the game. And if both Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown have off nights. They can rely on guys like Derek White and Al Horford to get by. And even when in doubt, just rely on Chris Tyus Porzingis when healthy. I know Chris Tyus Porzingis has an injured leg right now, but when he was fully healthy, he was a really good player for the Boston Celtics. My point that I'm trying to make with you guys is that the Celtics roster is a lot deeper than the Mavericks roster. And for a guy like Brian Windhorst to trash Luka Doncic on a personal level, it was absolutely unnecessary. It was absolutely out of bounds. And to Call Luka Doncic a loser is just not accurate. If he was a loser, then how did he carry this Mavericks team to beating the Clippers in round one? How did he carry this team to beating the number one seed in the OKC Thunder in the second round? And how did he carry the Dallas Mavericks to beating the Minnesota Timberwolves in five games? A team that a lot of people, including myself, thought would win the NBA Finals this year. That tells me Luka Doncic has done an incredible job carrying the Dallas Mavericks with his amazing basketball IQ. You look at how he can stuff up the stat sheet. He can get rebounds. He gets the assists really well, and he can score the basketball pretty efficiently. I know he hasn't done that in this year's NBA Finals, and I agree that Luka Doncic needs to be held accountable for how he has played in the Finals this year. But for the most part, Luka Doncic has carried the Dallas Mavericks, and the fact that he even has the Dallas Mavericks in position in the NBA Finals is already impressive in and of itself. Look, as long as Luka Doncic isn't out there calling himself the greatest international basketball player ever, I'm not going to have a problem with Luka Doncic. I'm not going to have a problem with him complaining to officials because you know why? Everybody thinks NBA officials suck. I think they suck, and anybody that doesn't think that NBA officials suck needs to get drug tested immediately. Because what do people always say about NBA officials after every game? Man, they're really inconsistent with their calls. Man, one moment that's a foul, another moment it's not a foul. Man, we don't even know if we're playing proper defense or not because they could call a foul at any time, even when somebody is breathing the wrong way. If somebody breathes the wrong way, oh, that's a foul. But if somebody crashes to the floor, oh, we're not going to call that a foul. I mean, the consistency amongst these refs is just inconsistent whatsoever. That's the only thing consistent about the refs. And for Brian Windhorst to be absolutely innocent about that whole thing i mean come on man you got to know that nba officials suck at their job but of course when you work at espn your integrity is compromised i'm not surprised that brian windhorse took the position that he did but i guarantee you if you put lebron james in that situation instead of luka Doncic, this man would have defended lebron james so crazy he would have defended
defended LeBron James like that was his girlfriend or something because Brian Windhorst is a LeBron James fanboy and that's the only useful thing he has in society. If Brian Windhorst has to talk about any other basketball player, he doesn't even really know what's going on in that sport, in that profession. He's an absolute joke of an ESPN talker. He is one of the reasons why ESPN sucks in terms of covering the NBA. NBA coverage on ESPN is just not good whatsoever. They should have been the network that got kicked out of the NBA package, not TNT, but it is what it is. And Brian Windhorst is just another example of why he doesn't know anything about the NBA. To put Luka Doncic on blast of being rude to NBA officials, I mean, come on, look, he did bring up some solid points when talking about Luka Doncic complaining to NBA officials. That is true. He didn't lie about that. But what I have a problem with Brian Windhorst is the fact that he's not consistent. I've never heard this guy cry about LeBron James complaining to NBA officials, even though that's what he does all game long. But when Luka Doncic does it here and there, oh, now he has a major problem. Oh, he's a loser. He's never going to win. And if you need to get on the other side of the tunnel, oh, you're going to need to see a therapist or something like that. And that's my issue with Brian Windhorst. That's why he's an absolute joke of a talker at ESPN. But of course, ESPN hired him because their executives are filled with idiots and woke people all over the place. As far as how game four is going to play out tonight, I think the Celtics are going to get the sweep, bring on the brooms, everybody. The Celtics are going to beat the Mavericks in game four. The only way the Mavericks are going to win game four is if the refs rig the game up early and often for the Mavericks and give them an incredible amount of free throw attempts early and often because if the game is ref fairly then the Celtics are not going to blow this game. Jalen Brown is going to play a good game. Jason Tatum is going to play a good game. The role players for the Boston Celtics are going to show up and unless Luka Doncic drops 40 or 50 points tonight the Dallas Mavericks essentially have no shot of beating the Boston Celtics. So you know what I'm going to declare the Celtics to win game four they're going to get the sweep they're going to win this series in four games and as for what i gotta say about brian windhorse shame on you because clearly you hold double standards for luka Doncic compared to lebron james so that's why i do not agree with brian windhorse on what he said about luka Doncic. although he does bring up solid points when putting luka Doncic on blast remember go ahead and subscribe to sports guy talking like the video and please comment down below if you guys do that i may shout you guys out in my instagram story every monday that'll be for the at dust nash tran instagram account make sure to follow me on instagram at dust nash tran and that sports guy talking also go follow me on twitter at dust nash tran again go ahead and do those things that i just told you guys to go do hope Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the content that was just produced. Peace out. I hope you enjoyed that video. Want more Sports Guy Talking, the home of great sports content? Make sure you click that subscribe button to get the latest from Sports Guy Talking. Go ahead and like the video. Comment down below. Check the description box on the video in order to follow my Instagram and Twitter. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the YouTube channel, Sports Guy Talking.